I want to thank you, this room of brave freedom lovers, for coming to this event. It's no small thing. I know it, and you know it, and yet you came, despite the threat. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a little situation here. The uh, security people are running like crazy outside. Um, uh, somebody said, we have no idea, shots fired outside. Our friend Pamela Geller was having a free speech art exhibit in the Dallas suburb of Garland, Texas yesterday. It was uh, a festival of 300 cartoonists putting forward their best depiction of the Muslim prophet Mohammed. I understand there was a $10,000 prize for the best one. Now, whoa, if you're starting to say that's controversial, yeah, no, not really, shouldn't be. Just swap out the word Mohammed and swap in, I don't know, Buddha, Jesus, Moses, and you'll see how uncontroversial it is. We live in a free society. We can depict anyone in a cartoon. We can mock or satirize them. That's what freedom means. But of course, there is one faith that you cannot offend, or if you do, it's on pain of death. And it is uh, of little surprise that a couple of Muslim terrorists attacked the cartoonist convention yesterday. Luckily, they were killed by the Texas police. No one inside was hurt. One police officer slightly injured, but he was released pretty quickly thereafter. So a good news story from that regard. Pamela's okay. Our own friend David Menzies was there too on behalf of the Rebel covering this art exhibit. He sent these quick cell phone videos that he sent to us late last night. Here, take a look. Okay, Ezra, after the gunfire w uh, went off, uh, we were all herded into the Garland Arena here, which has now been blacked out for some reason. But I'm, uh, I'm safe and I'll file some more reports as they come in. Thank you. Well, the lights have come back on in the arena. People are mulling around and evidently law enforcement's taking us out 48 at a time. As you can see, Ezra, uh, it's a heavy armed response. We've got the SWAT team members here. The lights are back on at the Garland Arena and slowly law enforcement are bringing people out of the Garland Arena uh, to I don't know where yet. Well, Ezra, it's David Menzies reporting live from Garland, Texas. I was at the Curtis Caldwell Center. That's in the background. It was the venue for the Draw Muhammad event organized by Pamela Geller. Guest speakers included Robert Spencer, Gert Welders. And then towards the end of the event, as people were filing out, shots rang out, presumably from a semi-automatic weapon. An officer was struck, taken to hospital. Two suspects uh, were taken down, according to police. Uh, the bomb squad trucks just passed by me a few minutes ago. They suspect there might be an explosive device on their bodies. More emergency vehicles continue to ascend on the Curtis Caldwell Center. Uh, the latest information is the officer that was shot was actually a security guard. He's since been treated and released from hospital. The two gunmen are evidently dead. Uh, the bomb squad is here just in case their vehicle has been rigged with explosives. So good news in that the First Amendment of free speech was, you know, remained strong in Texas. It was protected by the Second Amendment of the U.S. Bill of Rights, uh, namely firearms ownership. I know that sounds uh, obvious, but actually it's not. In France, many, many of the so-called anti-terrorism police are not armed, or if they have firearms, they don't have bullets. That sounds absurd, but it is, in fact, true. It also proves Pamela Geller's thesis that radical Islam is putting roots down even in the American heartland. Uh, one of the terrorists uh, allegedly is from Phoenix. So Phoenix and Dallas, these places are as free and red-blooded American as it gets. But even terror has come there. I wonder how long before we see this anti-cartoon terrorism come to Canada. Now, Pamela Geller's okay. She survived the attack by bullets, but she was soon attacked by liberal media pundits who said, you may have those freedoms, but, but you shouldn't be able to say it, but you shouldn't be able to criticize Islam, but, 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 but. It's what Salman Rushdie calls the butt brigades. The rise of the, what I call the butt brigade. I've got so sick of the goddamn butt brigade. And now the moment somebody says, yes, I believe in free speech, but, I stop listening. Mm. No. Yes. You know, I believe in free speech, but people should behave themselves. I believe in free speech, but we shouldn't upset anybody. I believe in free speech, but let's not go too far. 
the point about it is the moment you limit free speech, it's not free speech. The point about it is that it's free. Yeah, whenever someone says they believe in freedom, but, you can pretty much ignore all the words before the word but. It's what they say afterwards that they truly mean. Look, I actually believe that this threat against our civil liberties is getting worse. Not because the terrorists are stronger or smarter. They were actually neither, thank God, in Texas. But the attacks on our civil liberties are getting stronger because the liberal intelligentsia, the secondhand dealers of ideas, the pundits, the philosophers, groups like Penn, the International Free Speech Charity, they are switching sides. The people who say they believe in free speech and feminism and gay rights and equality, they are actually deciding that the stress and the controversy and the risk to their own lives isn't worth holding on to their principles. They're selling us out. It's not so much that the terrorists are winning, it's that we are losing. Look, of course some of those cartoons of the Muslim Prophet Muhammad are offensive to some Muslim. You know what else is offensive to some Muslims? Women voting, women showing their face, women speaking, music, art, gays, Jews, freedom, Canada. All of those things are offensive to some Muslim supremacists. So if you give up your freedom of speech, can I ask, what's next? For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant.